listen. Frightening sounds echo through the halls. Whenever candlelights flicker, where the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. There's no turning back now. Just after sundown, when darkness creeps over the land. The dark figures lurk in the shadows. The fangs glisten in the moonlight. And the ghosts of the world become restless. We begin our journey. Join us as we travel into the world of the paranormal, the supernatural, and the bizarre. On Night Watch, with your hosts, Todd Sheets, Chris Weisbach, and Hugh McLanahan. And welcome to Night Watch. I'm your host, as always, Todd Sheets, here with Hugh McClanahan. Oh, yeah. Clockbreaker Supreme. Thanks for breaking the clock. First thing the Scottish guy <laughs> wow. does when he gets to the studio is break my clock. <laughs> and, and there was wh- nothing wrong with it the way it was. Oh, yeah. It was only, well, an hour fast. Well, that's okay, though. Who cares? I, I knew what year, time it was. I knew what time year, it was. We didn't change the <laughs> clock at all last year. We didn't change it at all. Remember, I could do the math, and it was kind of neat because I stimulated my mind every time I looked at the clock. But no, you got to come in here with your kilt. And start slamming the clock around. <laughs> Next thing you know, the thing doesn't work anymore. It's Johnny Reed. Greetings. How you doing, Johnny? Doing well. Doing better than me, I guess. Yeah, Johnny yeah. took the movie we're supposed to be talking about and never brought it back. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> hey, I know. Boy, between you and Hugh, I'm a winner tonight. <laughs> you guys want me to meet him? Thanks a yeah. lot. Yes. <laughs> Must yeah. be man period day. I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's not right what I have to go through around here. Well, wasn't tonight supposed to be the We could Halloween. have given the movie to Hugh, no, no, but he no, no, wouldn't no. watch it anyway. <laughs> He's a good movie. The I, every time I give him a movie, he doesn't watch it. <laughs> this was supposed to be the Halloween after party yeah, the, thing? Yeah, you're the only one that brought a hat and you ain't even wearing it. And you, a hat and a kilt goes together so where? Why should I wear it if no one else brought stuff? You should huh? wear your hat, Hugh. I already guessed what Johnny was going to be, i tell you what. And Johnny, I don't know what's going on with you, but at least you watched the movie, which is nice, because I gave Hugh a couple of movies. I gave him Troll 2. First of all, he never brought it back for six months, and he yes, never even, still hasn't even watched it. Great movie. It's a great movie. I like Troll. I know. God dang it! No wonder, no wonder he's always going. I didn't. I don't understand. I don't know what we're talking about because I always think it's because he was born in Scotland. No, it's because he doesn't watch it when you give it to him. You think it's a racial barrier? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about racial. I think the barrier is kilt. It's got lead lining. So we're gonna get right on the subject. I'm so excited about tonight. You know, you notice I've got this. This attitude tonight. He's wearing the Batman stuff. I, I'm wearing <laughs> Batman and Godzilla. I'm a true rebel tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And that's because uh, we're going to talk with someone who I consider a pioneer of punk rock. I mean, I mean seriously, yep. uh, when, when the West Coast punk scene was exploding, the East Coast was hitting. Uh, he helped out the East Coast bands, brought them to the West, and he also cultivated and, and grew the the west coast bands i mean there's so many to name we talked about fear we've talked about black flag all these black different flag. bands while we Wrong. were off the air we're going to talk more about that now everybody welcome jerry roach to the show jerry hey how you doing how are you doing it's so great to have you here no thanks i'm uh, flattered well i gotta tell you but for those friends of ours that don't know exactly what you contributed and i'm sure that includes hugh uh, I want you to go ahead and tell everyone a bit about yourself and about what you've done for the punk rock movement. Well, I really, I was just happened to be there. I don't know. It was kind of a symbiotic deal where, um, you know, I I was convinced to give these guys a try, and uh, 
and uh, and people showed up, and uh, one thing led to another, and uh, I do remember how uh, how the uh, the slamming or moshing started, though that was uh, pretty interesting. I, it, it happened like uh, overnight, really. Uh, uh, there was this guy Jim Trash from the crowd, a local band, you know, and he was always screwing around, you know, flopping around doing the worm. And the bouncers would throw him out, and everybody would see that. So then, the next week, he's instigating these guys pushing each other around and, and looking like they're fighting, but they're not really fighting it. And of course, the bouncers react and throw them out. You know, and the next week, uh, I know they all got together at school or something and just said, "Hey, that's all good. They can't throw us all out." And all of a sudden, they were all out there pushing each other around. It was like, and I couldn't throw them all out, so I had to just <laughs> kind of contain it, you know, and. Like I say, I tried to stop it, but it got away from me. I guess it's gone around the world, and that's kind of the notoriety of the cuckoo's nest. Is, is that's where it started, and it's. Uh, I watched it happen. I tried to stop it, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the uh, it's kind of funny how things turn around. We had no idea what was going on. Although Henry Rollins says he did, he knew that they were being historic, but uh, and you know, I knew I knew something heavy was happening because I was kind of a student of, of rock and roll. You know, I watched. I watched Elvis happen. I watched the Beatles come along. I, I was waiting for the next new thing. When I got here, I didn't like it. I thought, what? And I realized, well, you're old. You're not supposed to like it. This is it, pal. This is the new thing. And it did change the world. Uh, and I and I grew to like it, and I got to know the bands, and I, I eventually it got through to me. But it, my first reaction was like, you guys are nerds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great period of rebellion and, and creativity, and... And because I allowed them to play, that was my great contribution. I really didn't do anything. But, but uh, new bands sprouted up. And just in Orange County, behind the Iron Curtain, the Orange Curtain, I mean, uh, we had the Adolescents, uh, Agent Orange, the TSOL, the Vandals, Social Distortion. You know, uh, those are the ones that come to mind immediately that made a bigger noise. But they were all from, you know, Orange County, Huntington Beach, and Fullerton. And, uh, and so there's an amazing amount of creativity and great songwriting, and uh, that still stands up today. I mean, these and these bands are still playing today. That's awesome. Well, yeah, uh, a new generation comes along, discovers these same bands, discovers what they were doing. Uh, they get into maybe something like Green Day, which is kind of a yeah commercial kind of, pop kind of punk, punk, right? Punk, more yeah, of a more of a corporate kind of thing now, even though you know they didn't start out that way. Right. Uh, and then they kind of go backwards because they're like, yeah, I really dig that. I wonder where this stuff started this this whole punk thing I think Green Day was the band that said their favorite band was the adolescents there you go yeah yep yep and uh, i think green day is great you know i, I, do I too. think that kid is fantastic entertainer you know oh I, I love their new album even they've got a new one that just came out and it's fantastic but anyway so we made a movie we went back in time and we got i made a movie long ago called urban struggle after the vandal song urban struggle <laughs> excuse me which was about you know, I want to be a cowboy, you know. That was the urban struggle, like those punks at the cuckoo's nest, you know. Right. So uh, I made a movie called Urban Struggle, The Battle of the Cuckoo's Nest. And, and it was, I, I was, I knew something new was happening in the slam dance, and I had never seen anything like it. So I decided to film it, and I got this kid to help me, a, a student at the local junior college. And, and uh, I bought the film, and he shot it. And, and eventually we put together a, uh, a really good uh, black and white documentary, but it's cool because we shot it in film, but it was black and white film, so it really looks archival. And we've used that footage from that original movie, put it into the, the movie we just, just made called uh, uh, Blackwork Orange County, which is uh, basically we're using that old footage and we show those kids as they were, and then we interview them today, you know, 30 years later, and right. get their take on it, looking back on it, you know. It was fun making the movie because I hadn't seen these guys in 30 years. You know, I dropped out after I lost the, the cuckoo's nest, so the city council took it away from me. And, you know, I, I went on, I had a family, and I went on, uh, you know, I had a career in real estate. and uh, So they all thought I was dead. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I made that movie American Hardcore, and uh, the guy that produced that movie, he's the one that told me, you know, the slam dancing started at your, your place. <laughs> and I had never thought about it until he mentioned it in that movie. And he, I didn't get in that movie because he said I was dead, and I already made it before he found out uh, that. Uh, that's when I realized there was a lot of, uh, well, you know, 
a lot of nostalgia, whatever, like historic, really. The fact that it did start there and all those bands and and they they were the you know they were the they they really were a big influence on everything. They were like oddities, you know what I mean? It was they were great and and wonderful, and I love them to death. But the kids, you know, the kids, the surfers and skateboarders. It was skateboarders that started that. That slam dancing, you know, and surfers, and uh, and the radical kids from the coast, you know, they weren't just rubes. <laughs> but everybody thinks of Orange County, you know, it's 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 kind of like the conservative area, so people look at it as some sort of uh, anomaly. But anyway, I was thinking about this because the Vandals had a song called Pat Brown, and isn't that about a guy <laughs> in your club that was trying to fight the police because there was a big issue? The Cougars had shared a parking lot with a. a a restaurant that uh, uh, had a lot of construction workers and blue collar people who were just barely used to hippies and uh, and then on the corner there was a uh, a cowboy bar with a ride the mechanical bull and all that stuff and so we had the the John Travolta cowboys you know from uh, that era and uh, and these two fisted drinkers uh, the construction workers and the punk rockers so it they didn't mix well, and so there were there were a lot of fights, and and the punks won every one of them because but they had the numbers, and they weren't afraid to jump in, and so it was like, eventually the punks intimidated the, the cowboys and the construction workers, but in the beginning they had to swarm a few people, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the parking lot was pretty famous to, uh, for a lot of action going on, you know. So they had a lot of fun. Uh, and they weren't political. They didn't care about politics. They were just there to do something new. And I think they knew they were doing something new, and they were really excited about it. And you know, that, you know people would dress up really funny. And eventually, it got codified, and there was a certain way to look if you're a punk. But in the beginning, it was a lot of funny stuff that they would do. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting to think back at the division. That, that took place in those days. I mean, you had you had a lot of people who were really strictly one or the other. Like, I'm a punk rock guy. I'm not going to listen to metal, and I'm a metal guy, and I'm not listening to country, and I'm and this and that and that. And, and it was really weird because now it seems like a lot of the metal guys they listen to some punk. A lot of the punk guys listen mm-hmm. to some metal. But back then, it was kind of weird because bands like Iron Maiden were being trying. They were trying to force them to be punk because it was kind of the hot thing. They wouldn't cut their hair. It was a big. They they had a lot of animosity. Oh yeah, sure. But it was a radical thing. Like uh, Chuck Dukowski said in the first movie, he said these guys had a lot invested in their ch- in their Led Zeppelin pool, and they didn't want to uh, change uh, their, you know, they they didn't want to, uh, you know, this thing uh, threatened them, you know, like <laughs> I've invested so much in my Led Zeppelin pool, what's this? <laughs> and so they, they resisted it, you know, and they said I won't get laid anymore. This thing takes over, you know. But, right. But anyway, <laughs> the Pat Brown. Uh, Pat Brown was a TSOL guy, and he, TSOL was, there used to be a band called Vicious Circle, which was like a, a band with a, a, a gang, with an auxiliary band, <laughs> and they became TSOL, which was a band with an auxiliary gang, and they, those guys caused a lot of trouble. They have a hardcore following, and they go mess the place up, you know, and a uh, lot of violent uh, vandalism, and, uh, but uh, Pat Brown was, uh, was you know, he was a real good friend of Jack's and uh, Jack Grisham from TSOL, and, and he ran with that band. One night he was uh, cruising in the parking lot, and uh, he had a, a beer between his legs, and I guess uh, a cowboy, a, a cop dressed as a cowboy, a plain clothes cop dressed as a cowboy, uh, saw him and, and reached in and tried to turn off the keys and, or grab his keys and kind of bust him for drinking the beer driving in the car, you know. And so Pat Brown uh, sped away, <laughs> and uh, and I guess the guy kind of fell down, and then another cop saw it, a uniform cop saw it, and, and actually stood in the way and tried to stop him from going, and Pat kind of swerved at him, tried to run him over. <laughs> oh, man. So, and so the the cop uh, drove out of the way, and he got up, and he, uh, and he fired three shots into the car. And... Uh, and then eventually the cops pulled him over a mile away or so, and they beat the hell out of him. We say he was never the same. And, you know, he died from a, 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 a hit to the head. And I always thought, you know, I think the cops started it. And that when he 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 was riding up the mountain bike, and he fell and hit his head, and it killed him. 
But I think it, the cops killed him, really. Yeah. But uh, it was like, uh, yeah, because he was never the same after he, after they beat him. He was always stuck on his heels, like a little punchy. So they did some damage, yeah. yeah. He's a blinking hero, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Because the cops were so tough on the kids. And it, they would... They would pull him over if they saw him in the daytime dressed like a punk, and they would uh, take their picture, and they had files on them. Oh, man. Whenever they saw a punk, they would... And the HCLU got involved, and it was a heavy scene. And then my club was the center of, of, of their their was their spot, you know, their their clubhouse kind of there. And, you know, of course, we ran a lot of great bands through there. We had the Dam there from England, and we had uh, 999, which is a great show. With a lot of... A lot of uh, English bands and a guy named um, Ian Colton sent me all these bands. Oh yeah, his brother was a drum for the police, and uh, and he had a, a booking company called Federal Booking or no, what was some Frontier Booking, FBI, and then they had the record company for the IRS or something. Anyway, they were that was their deal, the Copeland brothers. But uh, yeah, Ian sent me a lot of great bands, Ultravox. Uh, well, you guys had like Dead Kennedys, Violent Femmes. You guys had a bunch of the. I think oh, the Bengals yeah. were even there, and the right. Fabulous Thunderbirds. All those guys. So, suicidal tendencies yeah, is a favorite yeah. too. The, we didn't do all punk, you know. We did bands like X and the Go Go's and all the LA scene, you know, the Blasters and the Los Lobos. And it was a great creative time of, of an explosion of, of what punk did was break the mold and, and made okay for these other bands to do stuff like, you know, experimental stuff. Although X was. Kind of before they were, you know, we, X was kind of like party, you know, yeah. the art band almost. X said the X said the end of punk rock was when TSOL started. <laughs> right, right. So that was that was the beginning of the violence, really. And, <laughs> you know, my story is is from running the club and and not being one of them. Jack's story is is he was the center of it all. He's he's the guy with all the charisma. And they'd follow him anywhere, and, and he used it to cause a lot, wreck a lot of havoc. <laughs> there you go. We're good friends. Jack and I are good friends. We, I used to manage him when he, you know, there was this period of time when I was helping him out, getting the record deal. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So this kind of branched out, and he, uh, that's the thing, you know. As as I look at at the the history of things that you've been involved in, I look at this and I'm like, you know, that's that's the part that really is exciting. You had your fingers in so many different things. Hugh, did you have a question over there? Yeah, I, I was just wondering if, if you knew what came first. British punk or the, Amer- the American punk? The British punk Oh, no, punk scene British, British did. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, I interviewed uh, Rat Stavies from the Dam, and he told me when there were only 25 punks in the world, and the first punk gig was the Dam and the Sex Pistols, and then he named all their friends, and he said, well, 26 if you count Richard Hell. No, it was t- completely English. What, what happened out here on the West Coast was our own particular brand, and it was just kind of kids that didn't want to be, you know, they wanted to be macho and... and uh, yeah, the New York Dolls had, had uh, I think, a lot to do with it, too, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, and you guys I actually think, kind of promoted, like, it went from you to, like, Washington, D.C. I don't know. I mean, we had a band from Washington play for us. Uh, Bad Brains came out and played. Right. Uh, and I guess a, a lot of other bands that I didn't really pay much attention to, but I sometimes look over my old booking calendar when I was making the documentary, and a lot of these bands are, are kind of well-known now, you know, that, that weren't weren't really important back then. And, you know, I remember going through the hippie revolution, and, and I could see parallels in the fact that, hey, this is ours, this is something we're doing, and the excitement of, of something new, you know. You know, I, I, I had a great time. I mean, it, I was sort of in the, you know, I didn't really have any allies because I wasn't a, a punk. I was I was the authority figure, so we had lots of fights, you know. I was the, uh, I was the authority figure, so, but... As time went by, I kind of spoke up for him, you know, because I thought, well, uh, nobody else is, and it's just kids uh, doing something on their own when I started figuring out what was going on, you know. So I sort of defended him, and uh, and then eventually we, you know, we kind of, uh, you know, got along, and I was, uh, they knew I was, uh, my heart was in the right place, but the, the other bars hated me, the cops hated me, the city council, the other businesses, you know. I was, uh, I had no allies, Right. Although I did let it go wild after a while, you know, and they tried to close me down. The city council closed me down, and I, uh, I got this ACLU lawyer who was suing cities for, you know, what they were doing to the kids, like, you know, keeping files on them. 
taking their picture and keeping a file on them just for being <laughs> dressed that way. Totally unconstitutional. So this <clears throat> this lawyer liked to, he represented me, and he went all the way to the state Supreme Court in California, and he, and he finally got it turned around, and I got to reopen. Wow. And I reopened, it was May, May 1st, and I reopened with black flag. And May 2nd, TSOL, Asian Orange. You tried to close me, I came back from the dead, and I went full on, you know, balls to the wall. And, and, and then it was totally hardcore until they finally got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They finally got me by outlawing dancing. It's almost they, as, like they, you said, it's as bad as Footloose, man. Yeah, 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 I love dancing. They say, hey, you need to get a dance permit. we got a new deal here. <laughs> We're, you're, everyone's required to have a dance permit now if they have dancing. They couldn't get my entertainment permit because I fought it on First Amendment stuff like, uh, you know, free expression. And the newspapers loved that. So I had the press on my side and, and the media. I got a lot of media and press attention. In fact, in the movie, we got Connie Chung talking about it. Oh, that's cool. You know, Connie Ch- yeah, when she was a local reporter in L.A. It's not even right. Yeah, I mean, and that guy's, guy, that's the thing I like about this, and I'm excited about the movie because it, it's a tale about the underdog and, and trying to go up against the giant. I mean, it's, a, it's Jack the Giant Killer all over again, and it's a really cool kind of story. Yeah, and that was just, you know, dumb enough to, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know. I really didn't make any... I look back and I, I didn't make any bad decisions. Just every decision led me down that path, you know, <laughs> and to, of of uh, losing the bar. And, and anyway, I should have stayed in the business and 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 done concerts, you know, like Golden Voice. They eventually took over. Uh, yeah, because these bands got bigger and they had bigger rooms, and I went out of business. But they took all those bands, and so I should have do, done that. But I had another bar to go to. I, I had a place called the uh, Radio City up in Anaheim. And uh, so I had two bars going at the same time, really. So I, I kind of went up to that bar, and, and I did heavy metal. <laughs> we did uh, Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and uh, every band you can think of. Uh, Metallica's first gig was there, and their last club gig wow. was there. And, uh, you know, all those uh, heavy metal guys. Uh, but after going through the punk thing, going having that glam and heavy metal stuff, of these guys wearing... Uh, High heel shoes, you know, or, or girls' boots, and the metal guys are always like, "Hold on, these these hair band guys are not metal. These hair band guys are wearing too much hair spray. What's going on here?" And we were always like, like there was like a division between like the Metallica Slayer guys and the Poison guys. Yeah, we had always... Slayer. We had Slayer play there too. We oh, had yeah. Slayer yeah. play at Radio City too. And uh, That's every cool. heavy metal band coming down the line except Bon Jovi, I think, played there. But you know, nothing really happened there. I mean, it's not just the fact that. All these bands played there. Something happened at the Cuckoo's Nest, and there was this explosion of uh, of youth. Radio City got closed down by the cops too, but not by. It was just by a neighbor that you know had a vested interest that uh, got a petition, and they went, "Oh, this is the same guy on the Cuckoo's Nest," and they closed me down there too. <laughs> <laughs> God, so that's when I decided, "Hey, screw this! You know, I'm not going to get. I got closed down twice. You just feel like, uh, you know." kicked out of town basically like i got kicked out of newport so to speak although it was close to mason yeah yeah when we came back with this movie the like about a year and a half or two years ago we we put a version out at the newport film festival i got a ton of publicity it was like my triumphant return you know that's right that's 30 right. years later i came back and it was the hit movie of the film festival it was uh out of some 400 films it was number two in the in sales so I sort of had my day, you know, I got my return and returned in glory. <laughs> Waving your finger in the face of authority still to this day. That's the way it should be. Now, where can people pick this up? Where can people get this awesome documentary? Oh, it's on, it's on Amazon, and they're only charging like nine ninety five or something. It's Amazon.com, and it's called Clockwork Orange County. There's no A for some reason. It's just Clockwork Orange County. Gotcha. Clockwork Orange it County. It used to be called We Were Feared which was the original title, which I kind of liked, because it, the people were afraid of punks <laughs> in those days. But um, uh, our distributor wanted us to change it so that it would be higher up when it goes to pay-per-view, you know, and you scroll down to find a movie you want to watch. There you go. She, she shows up before we, W. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, Jerry, I want to thank you for taking time out and being on Nightwatch, man. It has been an honor to have you tonight, and uh, and and this is an amazing deal. I urge everyone to, to run out, 
pick up the the wonderful movie. It sounds great. Clockwork Orange County, everybody. Go check this out. Very exciting. Jerry, you have lived an amazing life, my friend, and, and what an adventure. Sounds like it's still going. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, I never expected any of this to happen. And I really didn't do much. I just sort of reacted, you know. But thanks again for putting me on your show. Oh, of course, man. It's our pleasure. No and, and you have a wonderful evening. Good night. Okay. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. Everybody, it's kind of it's kind of a strange night here on Night Watch. You'll notice it's a little quieter than normal. That's because Amanda has the Elvis lip syndrome. Nice. She's um she's having a situation where she can't talk right, I think, or something's going on. Everyone in our house is projectile lipping. It's kind of uh kind of frightening. It's, uh, it's kind of a carryover from Halloween and the Exorcist. Right? I think it is. Projectile lipping, really? That's, yeah. <laughs> Something Elvis lip syndrome, compliant. ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what's not compliant. What's Just, not compliant is Amanda coming in here going, Look, I, I might be sick. And yeah. if I really come down with this Elvis lip syndrome full bore, you have to do me the biggest favor because I've always come through for you, man. Don't you got to go oh uh, to God. Target on Thursday morning <laughs> and you got to get me this Twilight makeup. And I'm like, what? It's Twilight just makeup? It's just throw some glitter on. It's no. the same thing. Are you serious? Yes. Is this for you? Yes. Yeah, because she's like, I got to have it. I got to have it. And I might be too sick to go. So you have to go pick it up it's for me. It's selling out all over the place. Like, they get oh. it in itself. You're out. serious? Yes. Todd getting and I, Twilight. And I'm feeling kind of bad because I'm like, yeah, you know, Amanda does come through when the, when the chips are down. She's always there to help out. She helped out a lot when I was in the hospital. Yeah, I feel help, like I'm obligated she, here. She's helping us getting sick. Well, now, no, yeah, yeah. she's, she's going to help us get Elvis <laughs> lip syndrome. But I've been spraying Lysol uh-huh. everywhere. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. It's already the, starting. Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Whatever. Uh-huh. Get a job in a sideshow. But it's not sparkly. It's got some sparkly. Okay, I got a question. Where where are you going to wear this Twilight makeup? Everywhere. You're just going to walk around wearing it. It's not like... Anything with a Twilight logo um, on it is blasphemy. That's all I can say about this. So, uh, you know what? The Twilight <laughs> makeup. I just love it. Shut up. Tonight. Oh, I'm so God. super. Turning my... I appoint you minister of girly things that I don't understand. There you go. Yeah. Now that one's true. <laughs> that one is true, yeah. <laughs> that is very true. How many times have That's you fitting. run around to five different uh, Walmarts looking for some... Besides that, you, you can't even use makeup with Elvis lip syndrome. It just looks freaky. Well, you can't. You're just trying to cover it up. <laughs> you're trying You're trying to get your lip and it keeps twitching. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't that even put the lipstick the on it? it makes, okay. So when she's done, she looks like Two-Face? Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> just keep... Yeah. It looks like Two-Face looks like Two-Face. The whole one yeah. saggy lip. It's terrible. <laughs> Oh. Saggy lip. <laughs> yeah, well, it's I don't about need that song. time. Johnny needs a song. I think it's true. Kind of like Chris's song. Uh, everyone loves. I am forty. I did it again. Ooh. Where's Chris? Chicks dig me. Where? Where? Where's Chris? Chris, Chris, Chris whoa, 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 where's Why Chris? Why am I here? Chicks dig me. Whoa, 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 where's Chris? Chris, 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 Weisbach. Chris, Chris, where are you, Chris? I tell you what, we're gonna get Chris on the phone. We are. Yeah, call Chris via Skype. We're gonna call him. We're gonna get Chris on the phone. (laughs) That'd be awesome. (laughs) While we're waiting around here, we're doing it. We gotta make sure. David, heal my clock. You know the thing worked fine till Mister. Hello. Hello. Hey. Ah, There you go. Listen, guys, it's Chris Weisbach. Chris. Yay! Hey. We miss you so bad, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. How's uh (laughs) How's life on the mothership? Uh, it it sucks, but I'm good. <laughs> it does suck. It does. The food's not good, right? No, terrible, 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 terrible on the mothership. It, it, uh, it's all green and slimy and mushy looking. So kind of like our school food at North Kansas City High School. Ooh, is it soggy yeah. like my lip? Some, yes. Yeah, Something your like Elvis that. lip. Yes. So uh, <laughs> you're, you're you're gone for a few weeks. You're you're you've been abducted by the mothership. I guess you guys are doing some testing and and some uh, important. Uh, studies so you're gone for a few weeks is what i hear well, i'm not sure how important it is but <laughs> yeah 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 probably a couple weeks so uh, i don't know i, I think i want to be back i think they're going to drop me off for next week's show and then uh, we'll see what happens after that so oh yeah. so you will be able to make next week very nice very nice i'm, I'm thinking so I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be okay on that one so. I'll just God. switch places. With I was you. afraid I wasn't going to get to see you again until Christmas, man. The way it was sounding, you guys were up there. They were they were wanting to find out, you know, what makes Yuletide tick and all that kind of thing. And it was kind of freaky. I, I just didn't understand. <laughs> all they have to do is go to Walmart. <laughs> speaking of Target, where Amanda's trying to force us to go and buy her uh, Twilight makeup. Uh, speaking of that, they had their start of Christmas 
uh, at the at the beginning of September, Target was putting out the Christmas lights, and then at Halloween time, when they started finally bringing out the Halloween decorations, they had to bring the Christmas decorations at the exact same time so they could split the department between the two holidays because they go so well together. I hate it, Chris. You sound healthy. You sound like you're doing okay. I tell you why. You know, you get you get so close to the truth, and this is what happens. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, do, do you know anything yet about December twenty first? Do what? <laughs> Not even Chris can understand you. <laughs> Chris, Hugh wants to know <laughs> your top five. <laughs> your top five reasons for being on the flight side. <laughs> Hugh wants to know if they've divulged any secret information about December 21st and the Mayan calendar to you. Well, let's see. It looks like Obama will be president. I got that part. <laughs> the wormhole will open and, and suck Nesty into it along with you. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Hughes always looked forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable that you get a guy on there and you still got to ask him the top five. Blowhole. Blowhole. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's not say that. Gosh, what is wrong with That's you, cold. Amanda? That's cold. That's bro. cold. <laughs> that stuff is cold. I can't say the name no, my brother. Well, Chris, we, we played your song for you since you weren't here, and I want to play this for you right now. Sometimes there's a man, and I'm talking about the dude here. <laughs> Sometimes there's a man. Uh, he's the man for his time and place. And apparently Chris is the man for his time and place <laughs> and his spacecraft. And the constellation Orion and... Well, maybe it's Uranus. I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably has it is. <laughs> maybe I wrote it down wrong. Uh, the constellation. You where? <laughs> oh, yeah. You be careful you up there. Oh, you yeah. you uh you definitely be careful. Make sure they beam you down in time for next Tuesday. Uh, let us know if you're not going to make it, so we can call you again. As long as they don't jam your transmission, we should be okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't say jam. I was going to call it Skype thing from the spaceship, but it wasn't going to work. So. Well, we can, we can make this work. Uh, we'll have to touch bases. I'll have to walk you through that because I think we can make that work. I think we can make the Skype thing happen, even with alien technology, because uh, she's, she's, got, she's got Elvis Lip Syndrome, Chris. She's been sick all night. <laughs> Nobody's going to be here next week. Uh, Uh-oh, they're calling I'm, Chris. Did I'm you hear that? Sick. They're calling him. Hello. <laughs> they're calling him back. <laughs> Uh, Chris, you have fun, my friend. We will talk to you again soon. Have fun. Love Speak you to you later. We love you, brother. We miss <laughs> you. Chris. Take care. Bye. Bye. Long for you, my little there goes Chris. <laughs> A nymph in the pale moonlight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I pine for you, my little moon dog. Poor Chris. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, it just never ceases to amaze me how far we'll go on this show to entertain ourselves. That song reminds me of a moon pie. Do you know what a moon pie is? Sun cakes. Really? (laughs) Wow. Really? How about new? Listen here, sun cake. Crazy Dutch bastard. (laughs) Jesus. You'll be right there. Dark in the city. Night is a wire. Jimmy Star clothes. I don't have any. You still don't have any. Do, 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 do. Everybody rush out and check out Jimmy Star Clothing. Ah, uh, what so? He's our sponsor. <laughs> Woman, you want me? Give me a sign. Because I'm wearing Jimmy Star. <laughs> and catch my breathing even closer behind. Behind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Star Clothing. Yes. Also, Brian with a Y, David Productions, another wonderful sponsor. And Spine Chillers. From Doug Bradley and Alex Finbo at uh, Renegade Arts Entertainment. Wonderful sponsors. We love them. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Halloween show, go and download it now. Yep. Or right after this, actually, at nightwatchradio.com. Uh, it's a three-hour extravaganza, or it's also available in two parts. Nope, we have nope, three nope, different nope, ways nope, of doing it's it called on there. Spooktacular. Oh, sorry. Spooktacular. Spooktacular. Sorry, Hugh. Spook to you later. Good night, everyone. And pleasant nightmares. <laughs> Oyasumi Nasai. Night Watch is a Jackalope Media production with your hosts, Todd Sheets, Chris Weisbach, Hugh McClanahan, and Johnny Reed. Featuring voice work from September Day and production by Amanda P.